Okay, so I've already stitched out one of these filla designs that I'm putting into this flower that I've created with my rulers. And get my foot pedal where I can reach it. And this is just a simple kind of an S shape kind of thing. You'd use this for a fern feather or for flame design. I'm just going out and back. I'm using the chalk markings that I used to create this flower design. It left a line right down the center of the petal. So I'm using that to guide my stitching. keep it fairly uniform but I'm not too concerned about it getting just right now I'm at the top and I've gone all the way out to the tip and I'm just going to kind of come out on the other side of that line to make kind of a center plume and I'm going to stitch right down the middle I think it might look better without stitching right down the middle but that would mean stopping here tying off my ends and starting over or coming down and backtracking down this line of stitching to get back to the beginning. So I'm just going down the center. So coming out, and kind of curling in at the tip. So it's just a very open, straight S shape. If you've ever taken any of my beginner free motion quilting classes, we do a lot of these S shapes because it's a very handy shape to learn. You can use it in a bunch of different designs. Let's stretch that out just a little bit more. And you see this kind of fills things in without it looking too dense. And this echoed area here with my rulers is wide enough that it's not going to blend in. And I'm just going to use my thread cutter here to start over. Now, if this is going to be a nice quilt that was going to get cuddled up and used, I wouldn't have used my thread cutter. But uh, for samples, I like to do that. And I'll probably make this into a pillow, and I don't think it matters. So I'm using my thread cutter. Just secured the ends with a couple of stitches. Anyway, so I'm going to fill the rest of these in. And... Then I will show you what that looks like when I'm done. All right, so something I wanted to show you before I finish this whole thing out is that when you're doing these shape shapes, these S shapes, you don't want to park in the tips where you're changing direction at the beginning or the end. If you do, you'll end up with a bump of thread if you change too quickly, you can um, affect your thread tension just by the jerk of your hands. I'm doing this part just a little bit slower than I have. If I kind of stay here, let me turn that around. Let me get my handy dandy pointer right here. You can see, hopefully you can see, Get to the side, I think you can see it better. But there is a bump. I've got a dark navy blue thread in my bobbin. And so you can see a hump of that dark blue thread right there. And that's because I paused too long and it built up. And also, if you change too quickly, you're going to cause a little jerk to the thread which can throw your thread tension off just a little bit. So you want to just kind of do it just enough. Maybe um, these points probably wouldn't show as much if I had matching thread in the bobbin. But I've got a dark blue. It blends in. No one's going to notice it unless they're as picky as I am or just someone who's super critical. If you're super critical, you can stop watching my videos now. But um, anyway, let's try to do another one. I don't want this video to be too terribly long. 
Remember, always have your ruler foot down before you put your needle down. Or it will go chunk into your ruler foot. Don't want that to happen. So out, just stopping for maybe a stitch. Maybe two, no more. If you need to stop for longer than a stitch or two, then you want to actually stop your machine. And that's a good thing to kind of get in the habit of doing when you're first starting, is to stitch up and stop. And stop. That way you're not getting that thread build up while you plan out, where am I going next? I think that's one of the hardest things when you're learning free motion quilting is, where do I go next? And you don't want to make all these little bumps as you figure that out. So go ahead and just stop your hands and start back. Stop. Go back and stop. Once you've done this long enough, and you kind of just get a rhythm. It's very easy to get that rhythm. Well, that left a little bit of a big spot, but that's okay. Right. I'm just going to stitch a couple of times. I'm done with that one. And I'll finish out the rest of this. Next, I'm going to do some more ruler work on this piece, so stick around and watch the next video. Thanks for watching. This is Amy from Amy's Free Motion Quilting Adventures. You can find my blog at www.freemotionquiltingadventures.com.